I've come across a number of projects where you've seen a lot of collaboration between farmers and wildlife conservation organisations, whether it be stone curl use and monitoring stone curl use on farmland or rejuvenating ponds for wildlife. Uh, there's sometimes very close partnerships between farmers and conservation organisations. Uh, one such project has just been launched by Norfolk Wildlife Trust and that's in conjunction with FWAG and that relates to hedgerows and helping farmers both to understand the importance of hedgerows but also on how to manage them better both for their own profitability and for wildlife. Well, as a farmer, one of the main benefits is um, we've got turtle doves returning on site, which are great to hear in the spring and early summer. Hedgerows are really important for wildlife. Um, firstly, as a habitat in themselves, and that's not just about uh, the bushes and, and shrubs that we immediately think of in terms of hedgerows, but also the associated features. In the middle of the 20th century, thousands and thousands of miles of hedges were removed. So what's left is really, really critical. Over 2,000 different species of plant, animal and fungi to be found in an 85 metre stretch of hedgerow in Devon. They've got a really um, important link not only for wildlife, but also from our natural heritage. So hedgerows are really important for wildlife. Um, firstly, as a habitat in themselves, and that's not just about uh, the bushes and, and shrubs that we immediately think of in terms of hedgerows, but also the associated features. So. Uh, the herbaceous vegetation at the base, uh, the trees that we might find along the hedge line and associated features like um, ditches and banks. Um, so these are important for a whole host of our, our local wildlife, um, providing uh, habitat opportunities, uh, places to rest, places to feed, places for you know, predators to hunt. Um, and particularly importantly uh, for our, for our uh, wider countryside, they provide a really key linkage across the landscape, um, linking other bits of habitat and providing corridors for species to move through the landscape. are in themselves the most amazingly uh, diverse, biodiverse sort of habitat. And the example I, 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 I will give is uh, Robert Walton from the Devon Hedge Group did an analysis of hedgerows on his farm. Um, and one specific line of hedgerow, just 85 metres long. And what he did over a period of two years was count and observe and record every single species that he saw in it or on it. Um, remember, just 85 metres long, and he was really strict. For example, he did not count the, uh, the tawny owl, which he heard in the area, uh, but he never saw it landing on any of the, the hedge trees or the hedge itself. And similarly, the sparrow hawk charging through there didn't get a record. Um, uh, it's also the figure he gets is quite conservative because they were two quite dry years, so the fungal fruiting bodies didn't appear for many of the species whose mycelium were busy connecting a further amazing network underneath the soil. Yet he recorded animals that he could see with the naked eye, 2,070 different species. Now we can get all hyperbolic about the sort of the wonders of the sort of tropical rainforest and how amazing we've got some habitat, all this is amazing as this, but never mind that. Over 2,000 different species of plant, animal and fungi to be found in an 85 metre stretch of hedgerow in Devon. These features 
These features are, I mean, historically uh, um, astounding. They, they carry with them a story of the way the land has been used and managed over time. And from a natural history perspective, they are stunning too. Yet we are letting them decay. We're letting them fade away. And that is an absolute tragedy. Thankfully, the direct threats to hedges are much less than they were in the last century when we were seeing significant uh, lengths of hedgerow being removed from the countryside. Um, that seems to have turned round. The losses are significantly less uh, now and indeed we are seeing much more hedge planting and uh, the return of hedgerows to the countryside. Having said that, um, there are still some threats uh, and issues um, primarily related to the fact that ultimately a hedgerow is a living, dynamic uh, feature of the landscape which will change over time. Um, and they do need active management. Um, without management they'll simply turn into a line of trees which in some locations is acceptable but ultimately if we want to retain a good, thick, dense, healthy hedge then we need to see some sort of management. The flip side to that uh, is that if uh, hedges are managed overly frequently and to the same point year after year in time they will deteriorate um, they'll start to become gappy vegetation will disappear and we'll start to see uh, that hedge deteriorate and ultimately disappear from the landscape so we need to see some sort of management um, alongside that we do need to think about um, you know what's happening adjacent to that hedge so things like uh, you know cultivations uh, access by machinery uh, and vehicles um, spray drift from, from uh, uh, farming activity, all of those things potentially can have a detrimental impact on hedgerows. So there are things that threaten hedgerows but ultimately we are hopefully seeing a turnaround and, and a more positive approach to hedgerows uh, at the current time. Think about a time when every single field had a hedgerow around the edge of it and at that time fields were small so there were hedges everywhere and they were thick hedges because they were designed to keep livestock either in or out of the field so they were thick and they were thorny and they provided great habitat for wildlife and then in the middle of the 20th century thousands and thousands of miles of hedges were removed so what's left is really really critical because it's wonderful habitat for wildlife and it's wonderful for a number of reasons the hedge itself is great habitat for many species to live in if they're left with berries on they're brilliant feeding for winter birds of course at this time of year we've got huge numbers of thrushes arriving they've largely arrived now blackbirds field fairs red wings coming in from the continent but in the springtime they're great nesting sites so many of our scarcest birds in the farmland landscape are nesters in the hedges so we have birds like corn buntings, turtle doves in the bottom of the hedges, grey partridges which depend on the presence of hedges or strip around the edge of the hedge so hedges themselves are super super important. As a farmer, one of the main benefits is um, we've got turtle doves returning on site, which are great here in the spring and early summer. It's very rewarding, and they look fantastic as they come up, as they get bigger. And it's very satisfying to to trim them. It's actually one of the most satisfying jobs on the farm, I think. Hedgerows are really important to farmers for many reasons, but two, two are that um, they're an absolutely fantastic area for pollinators to be on the farm. Those corridors around the farm that are created by the hedgerows and the habitat uh, next to them, just adjacent to them. So you'll find um, not that um, hedgerows have very early pollen with a blackthorn, and then also they're providing pollen throughout the year, so the pollinators can move along the hedgerows and then move out into the crops. And then also at the end of the year you'll find that there is um, ivy within the hedgerows which provides a really important source of late pollen as well. The 
other reason that hedgerows are important for farmers is that they are a, a really good breeding ground for beneficial insects that will move out into crops and help uh, eat any pest insects that are in the crop. So the more hedgerows and the stronger hedgerow network we have, the more important those areas become for uh, helping with those uh, damaging crop pests. Hedgerows can also be really helpful in helping with uh, flood alleviation and also helping water to infiltrate into soils much faster. There can also be storage, uh, carbon storage benefits from hedgerows. If you reduce your cutting regime, those hedgerows in their growth will actually start to sequester more carbon for you. They are kind of a fantastic example of the kind of relationship between wildlife and people because we've created these things it's to our care for the last few thousand years actually that hedgerows have come about and become such a, a kind of endemic part of our countryside easily recognizable and uh you know just beautiful beautiful structures and they're, they're so valuable because people think of them often they're referred to as the long forest and that's a really good way to think of them because that turns them in our mind into a habitat and they are a long forest. They are packed full of trees, packed full of wildlife. Think of all that nesting habitat that you've got in a hedgerow. You can be one vast hedgerow and you can hear all these sparrows twittering away. I mean, how many nests are hidden in the hedgerow when you walk past and you don't even know they're there? There's shelter for the wildlife as, as well, away from predators and away from the elements roosting there at night. There's the food value of hedgerows. Most of our tree um, species which produce berries can be found in hedgerows. You've got your hawthorn, blackthorn, uh, spindle, gelder rose, all these things producing food, ivy as well, food and pollen for our pollinators and the food, the berries which are much needed at the back end of autumn, sometimes through the winter for our bird population and all our small mammals as well. And then you've got the idea of the hedgerow network actually being wildlife corridors linking areas of woodland and other habitats together. Think of something like a mouse that doesn't want to run across a closely cropped field but will run along the hedge line where it's got shelter and can move along there. Also invertebrates as well can move through the hedgerow where otherwise they might not move through an open field. So the hedge hog is not named at random, it's an animal which hogs the hedge. Uh, and the reason it does that is the natural habitat of the hedgehog is woodland edge, actually a relatively rare sort of habitat. But uh, along came humanity, along came farming, along came a need to fragment the land either to, to assert ownership or to, to you know, maintain stock uh, from, from crop. And um, we ended up creating inadvertently an amazing increase in the amount of habitat for hedgehogs. But from the hedgehog's perspective, this was wonderful. They went from some 300,000 kilometers of hedgerow up to over 800,000 uh, kilometers of hedgerow. We're currently down at around 500,000 kilometers of hedgerow. Now, it sounds like an awful lot, but the vast majority of that hedgerow is in really poor condition. It's essentially a bunch of fairly desolate looking uh, mutilated shrubs held together by barbed wire. And what we really need uh, to help hedgehogs, to help all sorts of wildlife, uh, is to rebuild our hedge network. That network, because the, whilst it is a network and it creates corridors for wildlife, it's also a habitat on its own right. So I'm a really big fan of the hedgerow. As a hedgehog ecologist, I have spent an awful lot of time mooching around um, in hedgerows. Uh, it, it kind of, I suppose, is almost my natural habitat. temptation these days with our farm hedges and uh, the availability of sort of mechanised flailing is just simply to flail them too much and too frequently and this can have really damaging effects to the hedge in the, over the long term. How and when we uh, trim our hedges is probably the biggest, that can make the biggest benefit. So really we're looking for people to trim their hedges as late as possible into, into the year so hopefully kind of past Christmas into the new year. And then we're looking for trimming to happen every three years, ideally. Um, and that trimming wants to just 
relax off a little bit every every time you cut. So maybe maybe leaving an extra sort of 10, 15 centimeters uncut to allow that hedge to just very slowly grow out. That avoids the forming of any kind of hard knuckle on the hedge. One of the other things to be avoided is, is having our farming operations coming too close to the hedgerows. This can be damaging to their roots and we can also have a spray drift catching the hedge and causing it damage. If you're putting insecticides on one patch, a hedge can really help to stop the spread onto another patch where perhaps more precious wildlife lives. And this is doubled in effect if you've got a headland at the bottom of the hedge, a patch of grassland, which stretches the breadth of the hedge. And this not just, it doesn't just help stop the spread of chemicals, but of course it's habitat in itself. So if you take, for example, a turtle dove, turtle doves have declined because of three major things. One is the loss of hedges, they need deep hedges in which to nest. Another is that most of the farm ponds in the landscape have gone and they need shallow edged ponds to drink. But also they need feeding around the edges of fields and our fields have got bigger and bigger and bigger and they've got more and more and more mechanized and we don't have that little bit of fallow at the bottom of the hedge or that little bit of seed rich natural grassland or flower rich grassland which provides all the seeds that when they arrive in the spring but also in the autumn before they migrate the turtle doves need in order to feed. So the ideal hedge is thick, it's got lots of berries left on it, it's got plenty of structural diversity allowing birds to nest and all other species live in it. But at the bottom, it's also got a corridor of grassland. It can be just a couple of meters wide, but that helps to stop the spread of industrial chemicals, but it also helps to give a little bit more habitat, a more diverse habitat to the wildlife that lives in our farmland environment. Now, I mentioned corridor, but in a different context there. They're super important, and this is possibly the most important thing about them now, as corridors in the landscape for the whole history of conservation. Conservation organisations, RSPB, the Wildlife Trust, we've gone around buying patches, really important that. Now this is super, super important, of course, because it's protected rare bits of habitat and of course the species that live on them. However, there's a problem with that which is that over time the surrounding landscape changes, over time the habitat within areas changes, and we now realise that we can't just hold on to these tiny areas. So for the last 10, 15, 20 years, the vision of big conservation organisations has been to connect across the landscape. Now, we can do that in gardens, because our gardens can be remarkable reservoirs of wildlife and areas for species, birds to move through the landscape, hedgehogs, newts, frogs, toads to move through the landscape. But the majority of our landscape, at least in lowland England, is not gardens and it's not woodland, it is farmland. And if you've got a patch of woodland here and a patch of woodland here, say for example, the wonderful Swanton Wood National Nature Reserve in Norfolk and then north of Norwich, North Wildlife Trust, amazing Foxley Wood. Now these are both ancient woods, they're the biggest two ancient woods in Norfolk. Now many of the species that live in them can communicate, can move across the landscape, especially the bigger species, through old hedges and green lanes and these strips of rough ground that I'm talking about. But if in between those two woods you've only got a sterile landscape that's pure sugar beet and wheat and barley and nothing else, then those species have no chance of communicating across the landscape, of moving themselves, of moving their genes across the landscape. And so one of the real reasons we need a revolution in hedges, we need big, thick, healthy hedges, we need areas that protect the hedges from agricultural sprays and which provide a whole range of different habitats for invertebrates, for birds, for amphibians and reptiles. One of the main reasons is that we need this connectivity through the landscape. Wherever there's a river, wherever there's a road verge, wherever there's an edge of a field, we need to think of that not just as a structure in the landscape, but as a potential corridor for wildlife. Because if we're going to have wildlife back in all its diversity and abundance across the, the, the landscape, we need to be thinking in these terms. And hedges are a big part of the solution.
If you look around our countryside now, you'll see a lovely um, number of big standard trees within those hedgerows. So one of the other important things that we can do is to identify where the next uh, sort of generation of standard trees are going to come from. Either mark those in the hedgerow and avoid them when cutting to let them grow on and out, or if you've coppiced the hedge, maybe identify one of the new, uh, new shoots and new growth from that hedge that you're going to try and promote forward into a new hedgerow tree. And also gapping up our hedgerows. That's really important to try and maintain that really important connectivity along our landscape and around our fields. Another good place to plant those uh, new field, sorry, field boundary trees is also within those gaps in the existing hedgerows. So we see uh, this hedgerow campaign as the start of uh, some kind of broader work developing our living landscape initiative and improving networks across, across the landscape. Um, we are already looking at developing a project for South Norfolk in the Claylands, um, looking at improving connectivity of landscapes uh, and habitats um, and we're in uh, the process of developing some work around how you can really effectively uh, and simply uh, survey hedgerows to then inform the development of farm scale or even parish scale hedgerow management plans um, so we can ensure the hedgerows are being managed effectively across a much broader part of the landscape. A really um, important link not only for wildlife but also from our natural heritage there's such an important part of our, our countryside landscape. Um, and there's so many crafts connected with hedgerows as well. Um, hedge laying, the beautiful structures you can get there that we create, you know, different parts of the country, different styles of hedge laying. Walking sticks, which are made from blackthorn and other hedgerow species, and all the beautiful craft that comes with that. And then the world of foraging and wild food and wild medicine, getting, you know, things that keep us healthy and, and fill our bellies from the hedgerow. Hedges are just fantastic things. Um, so the hope from uh, undertaking this hedgerow campaign is that firstly we raise awareness of, of hedgerows, their importance to the landscape um, and our wider countryside um, and a better appreciation of what they actually bring to, to the landscape and it's not just about the wildlife, it's all the other things that, that they, can, they can provide. Um, so it's about that increase in appreciation and then hopefully uh, encouraging more farmers and landowners to manage their hedgerows in a way that is, is sympathetic um, and yeah, maximises the potential that this fantastic network provides for our landscape. In support of this campaign we've produced a leaflet which provides much more information about the hedgerow cycle and all the management tips on how to manage your hedges well.